هذا القرآن يوحدنا بطريق الخير يوجهنا الله تعالى أنزله ورسول الله معلمنا ورسول الله معلمنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're still pondering upon the beautiful surah number 79 سورة النازعات and last time we met we discussed until ayah number 15 when Allah Azza wa Jal entertains, if you wish, his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the story of another messenger who came before him, yet he was faced and met by a lot of trouble. Allah says, the Almighty, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Has there come to you the story of Moses, peace be upon him? And this is addressing the Prophet, alayhi wa and anyone else who reads this story so that he would ponder upon it. Okay, what happened with Musa? Allah says, إِذْ نَادَاهُ رَبُّهُ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى When his Lord, Allah the Almighty, called him in the sacred valley of Tuwa. And this is an indication, without any doubt, that Allah spoke to Moses, peace be upon him. And that is why he's known as Kalimullah, the one whom Allah has spoken to. And this is not something psychological, something that is mental. This is the actual speaking of Allah Azza wa Jal to his messenger. He heard that with his own ears. And there's nothing to complain about. Those deviant sects that manipulate Allah's beautiful names and attributes. So they say, no, Allah does not speak. This is mental way or psychological way of communicating and this is outrageous Allah tells us that he spoke to Musa peace be upon him and you say he didn't why do you say such a thing he said oh we would like to purify Allah Azza wa from resembling his creatures and who said anything of resembling Allah to his creatures Laysa kamithlihi shay. there's nothing like him the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet, وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ He is the all-hearer, all-seeing. So does Allah hear and see? They said, yes, we believe in that. Okay, why wouldn't you purify him and say that this is resembling his creatures? Well, there are deviant sects that said, no, Allah Azza wa Jal is all-hearer, but he doesn't hear, is all-seeing, but he doesn't see. A'udhu Billah. These jahmis are the worst of kafirs. They are the disbelievers of the Muslims. Unfortunately, there are also deviant cults that are similar to them and would fall in the same category of nullifying their Islam. Al-Mu'tazila. Also, they disregard a number of Allah's beautiful names and attributes, though it's mentioned in black and white. It's in the Quran, it's in the Sunnah, it's a consensus of all Ahl Sunnah. They said, no, 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 we know better. We would like to glorify Allah Azza wa Jal from all of this. You can't glorify Allah by falsifying what he had said. When you come to Al-Ash'ari, the Ash'aris, they manipulate all of Allah's beautiful attributes, except seven. And this is outrageous. Allah Azza wa Jal's attributes are understood. They are part of Al-Muhkamat. They are perfect. When Allah tells us that he has a hand, when Allah tells us he has a leg, when Allah tells us he has a face, when Allah tells us he has eyes, when Allah tells us he has a foot, when Allah tells us he has fingers, all of these attributes are in black and white. We understand them as they are. We don't divert from their original meaning. However, 
We know what a hand is. We do not know how it is. So when Allah tells us he has two hands, which he has created Adam with, we believe in that. But do we say that his hand looks like this or that? No. Can we comprehend it? No. It cannot even cross our minds. So Allah spoke to Musa, peace be upon him. What did Allah Azza wa Jal tell Musa to do? Allah the Almighty said, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى فقل هل لك إلى أن تزكى Go to Pharaoh, go to Fir'aun. Who was Fir'aun? Fir'aun was the leader of Egypt at the time. He was the king and he used to enslave the people. And he used to tell them that I am God. I am your Lord. So go, Musa, with my message to Pharaoh. And Allah says, go to Pharaoh. Verily, he has transgressed all bounds. And say to him, would you accept Islam and purify yourself? So this was the message. Ask him to submit his will to Allah, to worship only Allah and no one else. And this would lead him to his soul purification. Pharaoh was the crowned king and he was so arrogant that he himself believed that he is the Lord of all and that he is the God of the people and that is why when Moses came to him and called him to Islam and to worship Allah Azza wa Jal he said is there any God other than me how pathetic these thoughts which came to Pharaoh isn't he insane does he believe what he says he's a human being a virus knocks him down he eats and drinks and has to go to the toilet otherwise he would die if he does not discharge these poisonous matters in his stomach he sleeps he needs rest he's weak yet he claims is there any god other than him so allah azza wa jal told musa to go to him and call him to Islam because he has transgressed. He went way beyond his limit. And each one of us has a limit. And our limit is that we worship Allah Azza wa Jal and not associate others with him. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn and the humans except for one reason. And that is to worship me. Allah Azza wa Jal got you out of your mother's womb knowing nothing. And he gave you the sight and the hearing and the heart to comprehend things with. Don't you want to be grateful? Shouldn't you be grateful and thankful to Allah? Look at you. MashaAllah, so sophisticated, rich, strong. You weren't like this years ago when you came out of your mother's womb. You needed people to take care of you. You needed people to feed you. Allah Azza wa Jal made all of this happen to you. And he made you who you are. And how do you pay Allah back? By associating others with him. So you have a limit. You should not transgress. You should not pass. You should not go beyond that limit. Fir'aun went out all of these boundaries. He exceeded by far. So Allah sent him Musa. And he also sent Harun, the brother of Musa, so that they would join forces and call him to Islam. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, the ayah, فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَن تَزَكَّى Invite him and ask him, should you accept Islam to purify your soul, your heart? And as zakat, which is one of the pillars of Islam, is originating from the same root word. So it is blessing, it is to increase and to grow. And Musa is calling him to purify his heart. And you cannot purify your heart except with Islam. This is the only means of heart purification. That is when you accept Islam. And he called him to purify his heart. And also Allah says, وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَى If you accept Islam and your heart is purified, and that I guide you to your Lord so you should fear him, then this means that you will attain paradise. And 
without fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, you would never be admitted to paradise. The fear of Allah should be accompanied by knowledge. Without knowledge, this is not proper fear. With knowledge, you will become blessed and you will be rewarded for your fear. Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Very really that among Allah's servants, only those knowledgeable would fear him. But what kind of knowledge are we talking about? It is the knowledge of Allah. It is the knowledge of his beautiful names and attributes. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be someone who fears Allah. Because the knowledge that is most important is the knowledge of Allah. You could be someone who's a layman. You could be illiterate, yet you are a scholar because of your fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, because of your compliance with his laws, doing what Allah tells you to do, refraining from what Allah does not want you to do. This is the actual fear of Allah. So the invitation was, Pharaoh, you have transgressed. You've gone beyond all borders and lines. Shall I guide you, invite you to Islam, purify your heart so that you would fear Allah. And the conclusion is, if you do this, you'll enter Jannah. Should I do this? What was the response of Pharaoh? This is what we'll find after the break. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So now, here's the invitation. Pharaoh, come back to your senses. Reconsider. Look around you. Don't be foolish. Don't be arrogant. And by the way, all these believers have a small Pharaoh in them. They're arrogant. They're not willing to listen. They think that they know everything and they know nothing. We call them to Islam. Come, take a day off. Just think about it. Be objective. And the Pharaoh within would never listen. And that is why we present them with evidences, proving that what we say is the truth. This is exactly what Musa did with Pharaoh, peace be upon him. Musa showed him miracles. Allah says in the Quran, in ayah number 20, فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَى And Musa showed him the great sign. He showed him the miracles. What were the miracles? A branch of a tree, a staff that he uses to guide his flock, herd of sheep, and to protect himself. So many uses for this staff. Yet it was a great sign from Allah. Throw your staff, Musa, and it turns into a huge snake. Pick it up and don't be afraid. And it becomes as it was a staff. So Musa was given a miracle. Actually, he was given a number of miracles that related to the knowledge and to the sciences of his people because they were magicians, they were sorcerers. So he came with a miracle that exceeds all expectations. No one could come close to that. And when Pharaoh saw this, the natural reaction would be to believe, to submit your will to Allah. It's an eye opener. No one can do such a thing except the one who is truly God, the one who is truly Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. But did he accept? Did he concede? Allah says, فَكَذَّبَ وَعَصَى But Pharaoh belied and disobeyed. There's a small Pharaoh in every one of us. Don't let this control you. Come back to your senses. You can see the ayat, the signs and the miracles of Allah all over you. Don't be blinded by the light and come back to your senses. So this was the normal thing. People don't believe until they see the miracles and the signs. Allah gave him the staff. Allah Azza wa gave him a sign and a miracle that when he puts his hand into his pocket 
and he takes it out. It is so white that is unbelievable. It's not like leprosy. No, it is not a defect. It's a perfection. And Allah gave him a number of other miracles, but he belied and disobeyed. And this is one aspect of rejecting the truth. When you become passive, I'm not going to accept. Okay, this is your problem. But when you go into high gear and you say, not only that, I'm going to attack you and I'm going to follow you and I'm going to kill anyone who believes in you, then you become truly deviant and a rejecter of the truth. Allah says, Thumma After he belied and disobeyed, then he turned his back, striving hard against Allah. So now it's not only not accepting the truth, but working hard against it and trying to fight and attack it. What did he do? Allah says in ayah 23 and 24, فَحَشَرَ He summed up his subjects. He gathered his people and cried aloud. So it's an announcement, a public announcement. Get everyone here in my kingdom. So what is the announcement? Are you going to announce your Islam? Alhamdulillah. You're going to become a Muslim? Then he gathered his people and cried aloud, saying, I am your Lord most high. فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَى فَقَالْ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى How stupid of you. That was a bad move. That was wrong. How do you claim that you are the most high? And by the way, this is one of Allah's attributes that the deviant sects don't believe in. Fir'aun believed in it because it's natural. A lot of these deviant sects like the Mu'tazila, like the Jahmis, like Al-Ash'ari, they say that Allah Azza wa Jal is not up high. They neglect the fact that Allah is high over his throne, over the universe. There is nothing over Allah Azza wa Jal. Fir'aun himself told his minister Haman, Haman, did you hear what Musa said? He says that his Lord is on the heavens, on his throne. Tell you what, build me a high structure so that I would climb over it and reach to his Lord and see him. And I think he's lying. Subhanallah, even Fir'aun believes in the highness of Allah the Almighty. And these deviant sects neglect it. So many places in the Quran, you hear Allah say, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka. We have descended it, and that is the Quran, in a blessed night. Allah Azza wa Jal has descended the Quran from above downwards in a blessed night. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحْ يَرْفَعُ Allah says that the good deeds, Allah Azza wa Jal would uplift them. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in so many places in the Quran that he is Allah above us. The Prophet ﷺ asked a slave girl, where is Allah? She said, pointing to the sky, to the heavens, above the heavens, meaning that Allah is above everything and above the heavens. And whenever the Prophet used to give a speech, he would point above and say, Oh Allah, be my witness. Oh Allah, be my witness. The angels ascend to him and the angels descend from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the funniest thing, even these deviant sects, they are ignorant. They are followers of their leaders. They don't follow the Quran and the Sunnah. When they are in trouble and they want to supplicate to Allah, when they are in a plane that is about to crash land or they are in a ship that is about to sink in high waves and high seas, when they want to supplicate to Allah to save them from the calamity they're in, what would they do? Would they do this? Oh Allah, do this. Or oh Allah, do this for us. Oh Allah, do this for us. No. They would say, Oh Allah, 
relieve us from what we're suffering from because they know that Allah is above. Yet when they ask them, where is Allah? They say, everywhere. Astaghfirullah. How dare you say Allah is everywhere? Say, yeah, Allah is everywhere. Allah is under your laptop. Allah is under the table. Allah is here. Astaghfiruka Rabbi Atubiri. Wallahi, they do not appreciate Allah Azza wa Jal. They do not exalt Allah the Almighty by saying such blasphemous words. Allah is everywhere? By Allah, he's not. Allah is over his throne and he doesn't need his throne. There was Allah and there was nothing with him. Allah is on his throne, which is on paradise, which is in the seventh heaven. So Allah is above everything. And this is what Pharaoh acknowledged. And he said that I am your Lord, the most high. So he gathered all of his subjects, announcing this to them. And that is why Allah said, فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى So Allah the Almighty seized him with the punishment for his last and the first. For his last, claiming that there is no God other than me. And then he said that I am your Lord the Most High. I don't know any other God for you than me. This is the first thing he said. And the last, which he paid heavily for, when he said that I am your Lord, the Most High, you should worship me. And this is the form of transgression. And Allah Azza wa Jal said afterwards, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعِبْرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى Verily, in this is an instructive example for whosoever fears Allah Azza wa Jal. So what do we learn? We learn that Allah Azza wa Jal entertains his messenger so that he would know that this is not the only thing that's happening to him. We believe and learn from this that Allah spoke to Prophet Musa directly, peace be upon him. And we know that there's no purification for the soul without applying Islam to it. And that fearing Allah Azza wa Jal could happen only when you know Allah and when you know his beautiful names and attributes. And this is portrayed in performing what Allah orders you to do and staying away from what Allah forbids you to do. And finally, the existence of miracles does not necessarily mean that there will be belief and conviction afterwards. Because so many times you see miracles and signs in front of you and this leads you nowhere. And this is what happened with Pharaoh who rejected these miraculous signs that came to him and he died as the worst kafir. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.